my name's Steve. I'm the owner of Toolite Trailers uh, here in WA, home of Erde Trailers imported from France. Today I'm going to show you how to assemble one of our trailer models, the Daxara 158. So let's get started. Firstly, you'll notice that I've got the trailer all ready to go. It's set up on trestles. Just makes it a little bit easier for the video. You don't need trestles. It's just as easy to assemble the trailer while being on the floor. So just bear that in mind, but the process that I'll run through will apply regardless of whether you use the trestles or on the floor. Okay, so firstly, very straightforward to assemble one of these trailers. And in essence, all you need is a 10, 13, 17, and 19 spanner or socket, doesn't really matter. A bit later on in the assembly, you're going to need a drill just to put the um, mud flaps on. Apart from that, it's pretty much all you need. Okay, first things first, we've removed the lid of the cardboard box and we've placed the trailer chassis on the trestles or once again on the floor. And all we need to do firstly is just to remove each component of the trestle. Now when, when taking delivery of your trailer, it's going to come three, there'll be two separate boxes. The box that you've just seen me here that contains all the panels. The box in front of me that has the wheels, um, uh, drawbar and other parts of the trailer. And thirdly an axle that um, we'll be putting on straight away now. Okay, so you can see now we've got the axle in place. When you place the axle on, make sure that you have it pointing in the right direction. You can see here that the hub and therefore the wheels are pointing towards the rear of the trailer. Okay, next thing, we get the two support beams that you fit. Under the side panels of the trailer. In the box that's located at the front there, I've just removed the bag that contains all the nuts and bolts and um, hardware required to build your trailer. Okay, I've emptied the contents uh, into a bowl. I've got a separate little bag here that I'm gonna keep separate because that is for the jockey wheel assembly which we'll work on later. Okay, so firstly we're going to attach the axle to the chassis using these four small bolts. We're gonna need a bolt spring washer, a normal washer, and we're just going to insert those two on each side. Okay, so I've got my four bolts loosely put in. I'm just going to make sure that this is all lined up nice and, nice and true, which it is. Now obviously when we're building then we use um, uh, air tools, just makes it quicker, but normal spanners are fine. So 17 mil, do these up nice and tight. Okay, now that the axle is in place, we're going to put on the drawbar. Okay, now that we've got the drawbar ready to, to be um, put into place, a couple of things we need to do, just remove this bolt at the front. There's a spacer in there, so make sure you don't lose it. We need to put that back in. Remove the elastic, which allows us now to open and spread the draw, par, draw bar apart. And we're going to put it in place. Okay. Right and left wiring looms. We're just going to put them through there for now, make sure they're out of the way. Okay, to attach the draw bar to the axle assembly, we just need four bolts, 19 mil lock nuts and washers. The bolt goes through the axle assembly in the pole that's drilled. Place your washer and your nut on like this. Okay, once you've got your bolts and nuts into place, we're going to use two 19mm spanners to do them up. 
Okay, next component we're going to install is the support brace that goes halfway through the drawbar. And this is what is ultimately going to attach the drawbar to the trailer. So we just insert this into the grooves, move it into place like that. So we just use 17 mil bolt, spring washer. Just a quick tip at this stage, these trailers have been built with exact precision and therefore if something's not fitting, there's a reason for it. You don't need to force anything, don't go and get a hammer, don't fight with it. If you follow the instructions that are provided with the trailer, in addition to this little um, tutorial we're giving here, you shouldn't have any problems fitting any component simply by aligning it and putting it um, and, and getting it into place. Okay, so we're going to do these bolts up. Okay. So we've got the support brace on. Got this little hook thing that we're going to attach to the chassis. As you can see from there when it's in place, that's what's going to keep that locked down and that is the tipping function that you release and the trailer tips. So we're just going to insert these 13mm bolts into the captive nuts into the chassis. And we'll do those up nice and tight. Okay, this is adjustable, which is going to either increase or decrease the tension. You can see there, it's a little bit too tight, so we'll just back that off. More. And there we go. Okay, next component is the jockey wheel. So let's get on with that. Okay, so this is, these are the two components of the jockey wheel assembly and we're going to attach those right now with the bolts that were provided once again in this little plastic separate bag. First thing we're going to do is reinsert the spacer that we took out previously. Now the instructions that come with the trailer are very self-explanatory, so I'm going to let you run through that and I'm just going to quickly put it together now so you can see loosely how it goes. Okay, we've got the bracket in place, now we just need to insert the the uh, jockey wheel itself and to do that you need to separate the two parts just by unwinding this fully until the bottom section comes out. Okay, so now we're going to attach the wheels but before we do that we need to remove the wheel nuts from the hub, they can be a little bit tight so you might need to get someone to give you a hand with those. Okay, with the wheels in place, we're now going to do them up only so tight because they will spin and we'll tighten them up when they're on the floor completely. Okay, with the wheels in place, we're just about ready to tip, tip the chassis over to complete the build. But before we do that, two little clips that come in the pack. And we're just going to use those to attach the wiring loom to the chassis. So it's kept tucked out of the way. Okay, with that done, we're now ready to tip the chassis over and to do this, you're going to need someone to give you a hand, okay? So here we have it, the chassis up the right way. Let's finish off building the trailer. To do that, we're going to need the 10 mil and the 13 mil spanners only. First thing we're going to do is attach the lighting panel at the rear of the trailer. Now to do this, you just simply insert that leading edge clip it into place and let it slip down, okay? Okay, with the back panel in place, now we're just going to insert the side panels first. And to do this, there's a little bit of a technique, 
We need to just rest that over the edge. I did say you don't need a hammer, but it comes in handy for this. Or you can just use your boot or get someone to tap it for you. Okay, now with the panel in place, it's just a matter of inserting the 13mm bolts. Okay, same again with the second panel. Okay, with the side panels in place, we've got two little 10mm bolts that we insert underneath the rear panel into the captive nuts that are there. When fixing the panels to the side to the trailer, you'll note there's a whole bunch of these 13mm brass bolts, which is what you use, except it also comes with two eyelet bolts. And you use those at the back of the trailer for tie down points. Okay, we've got the panels nicely done up tight. Time to insert the doors. Firstly, with the rear door. Okay, with the front door a little bit different to the back one in the way that it fits. And the first thing you have to do is just adjust these little bolts with the Allen key. Just open those up a little bit and they might require a little bit of adjustment as you slip it in. should all be square and if it is we'll just plop into place. Okay next we're going to attach what we call the nerf bars. Now what they do is they also they protect the mud guards in case you cut a corner and it's also where the spare wheel fits which we'll show you afterwards. Okay, so the Nerf bars are in place, that just leaves the mud guards, the th three bolts. Okay, so that's the Daxara 158 pretty much assembled. Now we're going to fit the spare wheel and spare wheel bracket. Now when you fit the spare wheel bracket, it comes with two different types of brackets. You need the one that has the right angle. Throw the other one away. First thing we're going to do is remove this sticker, which reveals a hole in which we're going to place a captive nut. Best way to fit the captive nut is to hold it with a pair of pliers, insert it into the hole, and just clip it into place like that. Okay, I've attached the right handle bracket to the lower part of the bracket, and now we're ready to fit it. Just follow the instructions that come with the spare wheel bracket holder. Now that we've got the spare wheel bracket on, we're just going to place the, the wheel on also. A little tip there is that once you've got the wheel in place, just turn it around before you do it up and that's going to help the wheel lock into place by using this brace. Okay, lastly, and you'll find that comes with the kit, we've supplied two mud flaps and a compliance plate which need to be attached to the trailer obviously and to do that you're going to need to place the mud flap like so drill five mil holes through the mud flap through the mud guard 
and then attach it by using the big pot rivets we've supplied with the kit. In order to get your trailer licensed in the relevant state, you need to have a compliance plate fitted to the trailer. We've already filled in the information, you just need to attach it to the trailer and the best place to do that is just on the front panel here, once again drilling a 5 mil holes and using the pot rivet supplied. You'll note that the trailer comes standard with what is basically a European type plug which is very rarely used in Australia so we have provided you with just a small 7 pin plug which is the most commonly one used. In order to change it over you are going to need to take this apart, cut some wires and rewire the new plug. The plug comes with instructions, pretty straightforward, if you get stuck give me a ring or speak to your local mechanic or auto electrician, it's not a big job and uh, shouldn't take any more than 10 minutes. Okay, so there you have it. Now you're ready to go off and get your trailer licensed. Now, you've just seen us build a Daxara 158. If you've ordered any one of our other Daxara trailers, namely the 168, 198, 218, and so on, the build process is exactly the same. Okay, obviously they're a different size trailer, but the building aspect of it is exactly the same. So follow these instructions in conjunction with the very clear written instructions provided with the trailer and you shouldn't have any problems at all. Now lastly, that's the trailer. If you've ordered a lockable lid that goes with it, I'm going to show you how to put that on now. Okay, one of the features of the Urday and Daxara Ranger trailers is the uniquely designed ABS plastic gas strut operated lid, which turns your general use trailer into a waterproof, dustproof luggage trailer, ideal for carrying all your camping gear and freeing up the space in your home. So if you've ordered one of these, I'm going to show you how to put this together now. The ABS lid comes with this pack containing all the fittings that you require to fit the lid as well as a couple of other things that aren't required so I'm going to dig those out, show you which ones they are so you can throw them away. These components are used for different type of trailers so you don't need them to fit them to your Daxara. So once again, throw them away. First thing we're going to do is attach the hinges to the front of the trailer and to do that firstly we need to remove the little black stock. There's two of them, remove the outside ones, you can leave the inner closer ones together in place. Okay, to attach the hinges to the trailer, we do it like this. We grab the spacer, place the long end up against the front of the door, and put the hinge on like that, and then do it up with the nuts supplied. Okay, with the hinges now in place, Next we're going to fit the gas strut. Now just a note on this, the gas strut can either go on this side or that side, but you need to check your lid to see where the captive nut is. I've done that and I know it's on this side of the trailer, so that's where I'm going to fit it. Okay, to fit the gas strut, firstly we need to put a bolt through the side of the trailer for the gas strut to fit on inside. A little bit hard to see from there because it's behind the tyre, but there is a little rubber grommet that you remove and then you put the bolt through using one washer and then the other side use the other washer and the lock nut. With the bolt in place we simply put the gas strut on and we hold it on with one of these little black knobs that can be easily removed should you want to remove your lid which really only takes about 30 seconds, I'll show you that after. Voila. Okay, with the lid on now it's just a matter of attaching the gas strut.
Okay, to complete the process of fitting the lid, what we need to do is attach the two locks by screwing in the screws into the pre-drilled holes into the side of the trailer. Okay, so there you have it, the Daxara 158 with the ABS gas strut operated lid installed. Now if you also ordered the optional roof racks, which you can see probably by the photo behind us that will enable you to carry push bikes, surfboards or whatever, then sit tight because I'm going to show you how to fit those now. Okay, so if you ordered the ABS load bars, this is what they look like. I'm going to rip the packet open and show you how to install them now. Okay, the ABS load bar kit comes with all the nuts and bolts required, as well as some other stuff that you don't need, so you can throw that away. Okay, so to fit the ABS load bars, the first thing we need to do is drill holes through the ABS lid. Now, you can't see from there, but Surrounding the ABS lid is a metal frame and the holes are already pre-drilled in there. So it's simply a matter of using them as a guide with an 8.5mm drill bit. And don't have to force it too hard. Just drill straight through. So it comes out the other side. So you've got four holes on each side. With the holes drilled, it's just a matter of fixing these four brackets with the clean side facing out using the bolts with the round heads. With the bolt inserted through, use the star washer and the dome nut to fasten. Okay, just a tip um, in regards to fixing these brackets. It's a good idea just to do them up loosely to begin with because then we, when we fit the next component, it just makes it easier to fit. Okay, now we're going to fit the crossbars. Now these load bars are universal in that they fit um, all the different size trailers, so they are adjustable. So firstly we'll just insert the ends. And fit them into the brackets. Okay, once you've got the cross members in place, it's just a matter of aligning the holes and inserting the bolts through. Okay, now that we've got all the load bars assembled, let's run around and do up all the nuts and bolts nice and tight. Okay, with all your bolts nicely done up, firm and tight, all you need to do now is centralise this adjustable bracket and insert the four bolts underneath, do them up nice and tight and the roof racks are completed. So if you've just taken delivery of one of our trailers, we trust that this instructional video will make the assembly process that much easier. Thanks for watching. I'm Steve.